Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Curt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2021 Hyundai Palisade. So here's what our Trailer Hitch Receiver looks like installed. As you can see here, we have a nice sturdy collar around the outside. We also have a nice black powder coated finish that's going to do a great job of protecting our hitch from rust and corrosion. It's also going to have what is known as a hidden design. Now, what this essentially means is the cross tube of our hitch is actually going to be behind our bumper here. So the only thing we're going to be able to see is the receiver tube opening. It's going to have a nice, clean, factory finished install look. So our trailer hitch here is going to have a class 3 rating with a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. Now, this is going to allow us to do plenty of different things. We can use the trailer hitch for a bike rack if we want to hit the trails or we can use it for a cargo carrier if we want to free up some space inside the vehicle. Now we have plenty of selection here at e-trailer. You're going to have a lot more to choose from as well because of the larger 2 inch receiver tube opening. So we're also going to be able to use our trailer hitch for towing. Now if we are going to be towing, we're going to need to abide by the weight capacities of our trailer hitch or the vehicle if lower. These can be found in the owner's manual. But for our trailer hitch, we're going to have a 5,000 pound gross trailer weight rating which is the amount we can pull outward. We're also gonna have a 750 pound tongue weight, which is gonna be the downward force on a receiver tube. Now keep in mind, we can use this trailer hitch with a weight distribution system as well. If we do, our capacities are gonna to increase to 6,000 pounds and 750 pounds respectively. So on the side of a receiver tube here, we're gonna have the industry standard 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, this is gonna be sold separately we also have locking versions as well here through e-trailer. So this is what's gonna be that's gonna hold our ball mount or the shank of our bike rack or cargo carrier. And on the bottom, we're gonna have our safety chain loops here, which are gonna accept those smaller S-type hooks as well as the larger clevis hooks as well. So now we have a couple of measurements that are gonna help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. That's gonna be right at 13 inches. That'll be useful when we're selecting our ball mount so we can make sure we get the correct rise and drop. So now we're gonna measure the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of our bumper. That's gonna be right at five inches. And that measurement there will be useful when we're selecting our folding accessories, such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. That way we can make sure while the accessory is in the stowed position, that it doesn't contact the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this one's pretty simple. Definitely something you guys can do at home by yourselves. We don't have to do any modifications to the vehicle. Everything's gonna be pretty much bolt on. We also really don't need to have any specialized tools. Most standard socket sets will allow you to get this job done no problem. Let's go ahead and show you guys how now. So the first step of our installation today, we actually need to lower our spare tire. In order to do this, we're going to need to open up the hatch on our vehicle and come inside to our storage compartment here. We'll simply lift this panel up and inside we're going to see a bolt down here in this little area. This is the bolt we're going to use to lower the spare tire. We'll take a 21 millimeter socket, we'll place that over the bolt like so, and then we'll simply just turn our ratchet and this is actually going to lower our spare tire. So now with our spare tire lowered, we can go ahead and drag it out and set it aside. So now we're going to come over here on the driver's side of our vehicle and directly behind our rear wheel, we're going to have this plastic panel we need to remove. In order to do so, we're first going to have three push pin fasteners here on the bottom, which we'll remove with a flathead screwdriver. We'll just simply pry that center section out. We should be able to pull it the rest of the way. Now we're going to have two 14 millimeter nuts on the inside here. We'll go ahead and take those both out. Once we get those loosened, we should be able to pull our panel straight down and out. So now we need to go ahead and lower our exhaust here. In order to do this, we're first going to be taking a support strap. We're just using a cam buckle strap here. We're tying it off to two points on our lower control arm. That way when we break the isolators free or the hangers from the isolator, 
our exhaust has something to sit on so it doesn't fall down and cause damage. But now what we can do is we're going to go ahead and prep our rubber isolators. There's going to be three of them. We're going to have one here, one on the back side of the exhaust, and then one up front. What we'll do before we remove them is we're just going to be taking a spray lubricant. We're going to spray down the hangers inside those isolators to make them a little bit easier to remove. So now we're just going to take a pry bar here. We're going to slip it between this bracket and the metal hanger and pry it off just like so. So once we have our rear hanger broken free, we should see our exhaust come down and this is really all we need. So before we raise our hitch up into position, we're gonna take our M12 bolts in our kit here. They're the really long ones here. We're gonna go ahead and slide on a conical tooth washer. We need to get two of these ready on each side because when we set the hitch up into position, we're actually gonna be installing these. We're gonna be using them to hold the hitch into position. So they're gonna be installing in these two holes here. So now with an extra set of hands, we can go ahead and set our hitch up into position. Keep in mind on the passenger side, you'll have to come in there first so we can go over the exhaust. So now once we have our bolt pushed all the way through, we can come back with our conical tooth washer, making sure the teeth are facing the frame. Then we can secure it with our hex nut. We'll go ahead and just repeat the same process on our remaining fasteners. So now that we have the two bolts on top secure, we're going to come back with our smaller M10 fasteners here. Again, we're using the same conical teeth washers as before with the teeth facing up of the hitch. And we'll simply just loosely thread those into position into the existing weld nuts on the bottom of the frame. Now, if you have some trouble threading them in, you may need to take some spray lubricant and a nylon brush and clean those out. But once we get both of these in, we'll again just repeat the same process on the other side. So now we're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. We're gonna tighten up our two bolts here at the top. Once we have those tightened, we're gonna take our 17 millimeter socket. We're gonna snug up the two bolts on the bottom. Now we can come back with our torque wrench here and torque everything down to spec. Now we can finally torque the two bolts on the bottom. We'll simply just repeat that same process on the other side. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our exhaust back up into position. Then we can also reinstall our spare tire. And don't forget, we need to reinstall our panel here on the driver's side. And that'll do it for our look and installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver here on our 2021 Hyundai Palisade.